So let's put on our thinking caps. You've got a function coming up and it's for quite a lot of people and you want some candles on the table but you'd like to decorate them somehow. Well I've got a fantastic way to show you how to make candle pins and these are simply a plaster shape which we can make with a little pin at the back so that you can press that into the candle as a decoration. These ones are unpainted but we can paint them later on. So let's begin. So to begin with we're going to need some plaster of Paris which is a dry powder. You can normally get that at your hardware store, your art supply store. We're going to need either a plastic or a silicone mold. And for this one, I'm using just some shells. You'll need a support container because you'll find often that the profiles of the molds are all uneven. So if you had to put this on a table surface, um, they often wobble around. So I like to put them on a container. It could just be an empty used ice cream tub of some sort that you can use as a support. And we're going to need some water and some drawing pins and a little kebab stick to mix. So the first thing to do when we are making these things is to actually put some water into the mold. It's never good to put the dry plaster in first because you end up having little dry spots and you'll find too that um, it sometimes can look pretty ugly if they don't unmold nicely and you've done all that work. Plaster sets fairly quickly so it will start to harden in about 10 minutes or so. So this way you'll find that you're not mixing up an excessive amount of plaster and then you find that it's gone hard and you can't use it. So pretty much half fill your mold with water and then just take your plaster and with a little stick or with a little spoon, you start to put that into your mold so that it can fill them up completely. And when you're doing candle pins, you need to have the plaster in the molds fairly firm so that the actual um, pin will settle into the plaster. You don't want it to sink to the bottom if the mixture is very, very thin. So we need to have a slightly stiffer mixture than if you were just doing a regular shape, which is a normal plaster shape is about 50% water, 50% plaster. But for the candle pins, you maybe want to do 60% plaster and 40 water. But um, there are ways to fix things as you go along, so I'll show you those. Okay, so I'm just going to scrape in some of the plaster to this to make it a little bit quicker. Filling up all the way as I go. And then I want to just tap my mold so that it starts to settle. Now you can see I've got quite a lot of water there. So what I'm going to do now is just gently tip the mold forward so that that excess water just drains into the container below. And because it's draining into the container below, it means that I'm mixing up the right quantities. It's not ever a good idea to have your plaster mold filled completely to the top because sometimes you get quite raggedy edges. So I normally just scrape a sucker stick over the surface just to make sure that um, it's completely flat. Okay, there we go. That's the last one. I'm just going to use some of this moisture to fill up here. And I have on hand with me, in case I get a little dry spot like that, a little spritz bottle that's got water in. And then I'm able to just mix up what I have here. So this one has got a perfect consistency now. Just want to make sure that you don't have any air bubbles. And to make sure that you don't have any air bubbles, we're just going to tap this a couple of times. Let me just use this last bit of plaster here while I've got it, sorry. All right, so I'm going to just use my little kebab stick here to mix that in. Make sure that where you've got pointed edges or little thin edges that you actually are filling that with plaster. I don't want these um, as candle pins. I'm not talking about if I was going to use them as fridge magnets. I don't want them to be too thick and heavy. So for some of the bigger ones like this one with the long tapered shell, I'm not going to fill the mold to the top because that will make it a very big, thick, chunky one. I'm just going to leave it partially filled. And so now what I'm going to do is just hold the mold on the side and just tap it. And you'll see with me tapping that these little air bubbles um, are popping to the surface. I don't know if you can see that. You can see the little air bubbles there. And that's really good because you don't want air bubbles in your molds, especially if they're on the surface of the mold, um, which is going to be facing forward when the design is completed. If you have mixed up your plaster and it is still slightly too liquid, just step away for a minute or so just to let it start to harden and then you'll be able to insert the pin. 
So what we need to do now is to take your drawing pin and with the head you're going to simply find the center of your design so that it disperses nicely in the weight. If you need to just hold it with a pair of tweezers and you're going to just embed the head into the plaster like that. Now I'm just going to clean up any edges so that I don't have a thick film of plaster around the outside and I'm going to do the same with this one here. Let's just find a good spot to put your pin in and then just fill the inside head of the pin with the plaster. I'll show you what I've done in a second. Right, so what I've done, and you probably couldn't see it because my hand was in the way, is that I've just sunk the head into the plaster and then I've just filled this little area here with plaster so that it can actually just settle in. Now you need to leave these to dry. As I've said to you before, they will start to harden in no time at all, um, but you will find that they're not completely set. And where you have a delicate design like this little shell, I would be inclined to say, just leave it till tomorrow. Um, or if you've done this early in the morning, leave it until later in the afternoon. Then when you unmold them, they should just fall out of the mold completely easily on their own. And then you will find that you've actually got a shape that is slightly more, um, it's a little bit more yellow um, in color. Leave it to dry completely before you start to paint. It is quite a chalky substance, and they do use this in making chalk itself and some of our art crowns. But um, what you can do is you can sand the back if you've got any uneven areas like this. You can sometimes just use your finger to neaten the edges if there are any little sort of slightly sort of rough edges or just a piece of sandpaper. And then you can use your acrylic paints to paint those. And you will find that you're able to do quite a lot out of very little plaster. And they're a super way to decorate for a theme. I mean, just imagine you're having a nice evening beach wedding and you want your candles decorated. How easy is this to do? Anyway, I hope this has given you some ideas and it's not too difficult to make. Bye!